It's heavier, exceeding 60 tons, which is unsuitable for Ukraine's muddy terrain and requires much more intensive maintenance. Does this explain so many casualties? Yes, but that's not all. And besides the versions sent to Ukraine being inferior in many aspects, the Abrams were deployed by the Ukrainians on hot fronts, such as the Vidvika, without artillery or aviation cover, facing mines, Hornet missiles, and especially drones. And speaking of drones, kamikaze-type models are redefining armored warfare. Tanks like the T-72, T-80, T-90, and Abrams were designed for frontal threats, such as cannons and guided missiles. But inexpensive drones, some costing less than $500, attack from above or even manage to enter armored vehicles through open hatches, carrying explosives that detonate fuel or ammunition, causing fires and devastating explosions. In Ukraine, such drones destroyed several Abrams armored vehicles, mobilizing them with hits to the turret or engine, followed by secondary attacks. Reports from 2025 show that 87% of the Ukrainian fleet was lost this way, forcing adaptations such as anti-drone cages and even Soviet explosive reactive armor on the remaining Abrams. In short, the M1 Abrams is an engineering prodigy born to dominate the Cold War battlefields.